As the newly elected chair of the National Governors Association, Governor Cox has launched the, quote, Disagree Better initiative, and the aim of which is to look at the problems of polarization, elevate the solutions that groups around the country are already implementing, and feature governors showing what disagreeing better looks like. And Governor Spencer Cox joins us now. Governor, it's great to have you here. I, I we, we loved playing that clip last week. I told a couple of different stories because... I'm, I'm not a reformed politician, once a politician, always a politician, but I'm still moved by Democrats like Lawton Childs, who had no use for me politically, none. And yet, when Bill Clinton came down and his people tried to keep me out of the room with everybody else, Lawton said, wait a second, it's his district, we're all in this together, and pulled me in there. And as a young kid, say, Bob Graham, the same way could not have been more gracious to me as a powerful Democrat. And man, what a difference that made when Florida issues came up. We all worked together. Yeah, it, it, it used to be, I think, a little more common. Uh, certainly, we've gotten away from that as a country. And, and look, I, I think that, that Americans are, are actually getting tired of it. Uh, I, I know we, we've seen some recent polling that show that, that, that more Americans wish that members of Congress would work together. And uh, I think that pendulum is starting to, sweep, to, to swing back. We're tired of the, the toxic partisanship that, that has infected our country, that has infected our neighborhoods, and, and quite frankly, that has infected our families. And uh, we're, we're trying to provide some some counter programming to that uh, that negativity that is out there right now. I'm grateful for my fellow governors who are who are helping with this initi initiative. Uh, Jared Polis, my Democratic counterpart in uh, in Colorado, we're, we're deeply aligned on this issue, even though we're, we're very divided on lots of other important issues. Governor Stenzaki, I wanted to ask you, I'm sure you watched the debate last night when you were watching it. Who spoke to you and, and who did you think could meet the moment of, of speaking to a broader group of the public and being able to engage people of both parties, if, if anyone on that stage? Sure. Well, well, um, you might be very disappointed in me. I did not watch the debate last night. I did catch up on the highlights as many <laughs> mm -hmm. as I could. Like most Americans, I have a lot of work to do and didn't have uh, a couple hours to sit down and, and, and watch TV last night. But um, I, I did think actually that Nikki Haley um, really stood out to me. I, I'm a little partial to governors. I've said that before. We have lots of governors or former governors that are, are running for, for president in my party right now. But um, I, I, was, I was very impressed with her, with, with her knowledge and her ability to communicate her ability to communicate honestly, her ability to uh, to take on some, some really hard topics and do so in, in, in what I felt was a, a respectful manner. But but again, disagreeing better isn't about just agreeing that we all have to get along. It, it is about disagreeing. It's about attacking ideas and, and not people. And uh, I thought she really stood out last night in a, in a very positive way. Governor, you've said in the past, I like to win elections. I don't believe Donald Trump can win the general election. We need somebody else. We look at the polling. He's winning overwhelmingly at this point. We understand it's early. Did you see someone on that stage who can change this dynamic of the race where it seems to be that Donald Trump only gets stronger with every indictment that comes down the pike? Do you see something changing in this race that allows one of those people on stage to catch him? Well, look, as, as you said, it is very early, and, and uh, you, you know I, I'm surprised we're even doing debates before uh, before Labor Day. Uh, historically, polling has not mattered much, but but I, I I also have to be honest. Like this is this is pretty unique, right? It's it's rare that we have a former president who is running who has a lead like this and who has seemed since since really 2015 and and, and 2016 to be impervious to to anything that would normally happen in politics. And so um, I I don't know that there's anything that could change that direction, except that I do think it's important to point out that polling in just the last week's show, and I think this is just remarkable and also kind of insane, that 70 percent of Republicans actually don't want Donald Trump to even run. Um, and and 75% of Democrats don't want Joe Biden to run. So we're, we're headed down this path where, where two, two of the least popular candidates ever are, are very likely to get nominated by their parties. And so um, what, I, I do think there were some positives last night. I don't know how many people were watching. I haven't seen the numbers yet. I don't, you know, we'll see what polling happens over the next couple of days, but, but it is still so early. And, and we also have this, this crazy way of, of, of electing or, or nominating uh, our, our, our candidates where, you know, 
Iowa matters much more than Utah or really any place else. New Hampshire, the, these two small states um, that are that are having such a large impact in this. So, you know, my, my hope is that, yeah. that Iowans were watching and paying attention and that they saw something they liked. So, so Governor, I want to talk about disagreeing better and you, something that I, I picked up from you. Uh, it's one of the first times I ever actually heard a whole lot about you. It was, um, it was several months ago, uh, and, and the huge debate was trans athletes and people on the left and the right, mainly the right, were using this as a wedge issue. Uh, and, and despite the fact 82% of Americans uh, we saw in a, a Pew poll don't want male athletes who transition post-puberty uh, to compete against women, right? So it's, it's pretty fixed politically about where most Americans are. But you did something I thought pretty remarkable. You, you, you uh, vetoed a bill uh, that would ban trans athletes that was over, uh, overturned, uh, the veto was overturned, and your response was wonderful. And it's about disagreeing better. You, you said, listen, you basically said, I understand. This doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of us, but we've got like four trans athletes in the entire state of Utah. We should be able to help them. We should show compassion to them. And I thought, my gosh, how revolutionary. Somebody in politics in 2023 leading with compassion. Doesn't mean you're gonna do everything that everybody wants you to do, but looking at an issue through the lens of compassion, through the lens of love. Almost sounds revolutionary and radical in 2023, but you did it. And I just think you talk about disagreeing better. How important is compassion uh, in, in this whole equation? Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And by the way, I, I'm where 82% of Americans are. I actually agree that 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 you know that 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 males post puberty transitioning to females should not be competing and, and taking scholarships away from from, from our girls. I, I I don't believe we should be doing any of that. And, uh, and in fact, everything I said was going to happen actually happened. A judge put a stay on that on that ban, um, and we found another way. To, again, I think a much more compassionate way here in Utah uh, to to implement that. So, so I, you know, I, I think there are ways to solve some of the biggest problems, um, but, but compassion does matter. And, and look, th this isn't just, a, I, I think it's much bigger than, than just politics. I, I, I think the, 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 the course we are heading nation is, is unsustainable. Um, we can't continue to tear each other apart. We can't hate, I, I, I believe there's nothing more un-American than hating our fellow Americans. And um, the, the, the political violence that we're seeing on both sides, we, we, you know, we saw it in, in 2020 with riots in major cities. We saw it on January 6th um, at, at, the, at the United States Capitol. I mean, that is the direction we are headed down, and we are allowing politicians to, uh, to, uh, to take this hyper-partisanship and use it for their advantage to continue to tear us apart. Um, I actually think it's good politics um, to, to show some compassion, to care about other people. I think it's good politics, but I, I think our, our national security, I think when you look at what's happening in, in Russia and Ukraine and uh, with Vladimir Putin and, and Xi Jinping, in, in, I, I think they are they want us to be divided because we are weaker as a nation when we do that and so showing compassion and care for our fellow Americans even and maybe especially when we disagree is absolutely critical